What's up guys, Jack here with MTX, and I'm 19, and as a 19 year old, I'm pretty hip with the memes, although it is very rare that a meme will catch my attention and make me really want to do something with my life, do something to accomplish a goal. It doesn't engage me, it doesn't encourage me, it doesn't make me want to do something, and then I saw this. Wi-Fi's fine all around the house, but when I get into bed, Wi-Fi's terrible, so I built this. Completely assembled here in the USA out of zip ties and electrical tape by a 19 year old in his bedroom, it's the Wi-Fi on a stand. Playing with an APAC Mesh Pro, a U6 Lite, APAC Pro, APAC Pro, a Nano HD, and a 16 port POE switch. If 5G causes cancer, then this is an oven for your brain. <sighs> so now to fire it up, all we have to do is give it power, data, and more data. Blinky lights! But Jack, you might be asking, how does this magical thing work? Well first it takes a network connection, and then it splits it out to all these access points, then powers them all up, and then provides a cancerous amount of Wi-Fi to you in bed. I'm not crazy, you are! Now with my total genius idea, I may or may not have forgotten to mm, test it, so... Wow, these speeds are awful. I'm pretty sure I remember learning something, you know, from the School of Common Sense that says, too much of a good thing can be bad. Take cocaine, for instance. This is gonna be a really oversimplified explanation of things, so just bear with me. With all these access points, they're all trying to talk over each other as if they're having one big conversation like a cafeteria at school or something. You can't understand what anybody's saying because everybody's speaking the same language at a very loud volume. These are all saying, hi, I'm an access point. Hey, I have data. And then your devices are saying, hey, I have data. But because everybody's talking at the same time so close to each other, nobody knows what's going on. Now you might be thinking, what if these access points are broadcasting different networks? What if this is broadcasting MTS and this is broadcasting Pretty Fly for Wi-Fi, the most overrated, awful name for a Wi-Fi network on the planet, don't make it pretty fly for a Wi-Fi or I will come hurt you. But I digress, if we go back to our cafeteria lunchroom explanation that I gave at the beginning, everybody's still speaking English in there. I don't know what languages they speak at your high school, but still, for the most part, they're all speaking English. It doesn't matter. It's still very difficult to hear what's happening because everybody's speaking the same language, everybody's speaking loudly, trying to talk over each other so that way somebody can hear what they're trying to say. It doesn't matter. When you get too many networks, too much channel congestion, it becomes incredibly difficult to hear what the other networks are trying to say. So, what you need to do is separate the channels. Separating the channels is similar to speaking a different language. They can still kind of clash and communicate with each other. They're still a completely separate language. So, if we go, hello. If you're natively an English speaker, you heard the hello better than you heard the hola. But if you're a native Spanish speaker, you heard me say hola better than I said hello. Therefore, we have the channel separation. There becomes that separation where one device looking for a network on one channel is different and separated in a way where they can be talking at the same time, but you're still able to more clearly distinguish what the other network is trying to say versus what my network is trying to say. MTS is now different than Pretty Fly for a Wi-Fi, all because we're speaking in a different channel and a different language. So we need to scale up our experiment here by retesting my house. Now I'm gonna retest it using both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 stuff. So that way we can see, hey, does Wi-Fi 6 make a difference or does the same rules still apply? Now my general rule of thumb is to put an access point every thousand square feet with a minimum of one access point per floor except for the basement. Now this is, you know, home networking by the way, and my house is designed like, you know, that. It's, it's, it's weird, it's a, it's a shape, entryway, and some weird walls. My house is 2400 square feet, so I have two access points. I have an APAC Pro down here in the first floor in the living room, and I have another APAC Pro up in my attic, and that provides coverage to all the bedrooms, and the APAC Pro down here provides Wi-Fi to everything in this open area. So, let's see if those rules have changed at all. Cue time-lapse mode! Who am I kidding? I already did all the testing before this video even started. Yeah, so I mean, the results pretty much say that Wi-Fi 6 doesn't make much of a difference in terms of range testing. Like, it doesn't make a difference to the point where the difference between my tests was 10 megabits per second. So, I'm not even going to bother generating graphs for that. But yeah, so I guess my general rule of thumb still stands. An access point per thousand square feet with a minimum of one access point per livable floor. And you should be good to go from there. Now, if your house is, you know you know, brick and mortar walls and all that weird stuff. Well, then the test results are gonna be a little bit different, but I only have, you know, a drywalled house that I can easily use for testing. So yeah, if your house is, you know, a general house here in the US, I'm not sure about Europe. I know they love really thick walls, but um, yeah, here in a drywalled house, an access point every thousand square feet, or generally one per floor, should do you just fine. Also, it's a lot easier to underspec your Wi-Fi than it is to overspec it. So, if you need to buy some access points and you're not sure how many, maybe buy an extra. You can then sell it on eBay or return it to Amazon if you don't end up needing it. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching. I'll have links to the access points that I talked about, I guess, down in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.